continuing on, um, in the last video, I went through the entire F06 file. I went uh, design cycle by design cycle explaining what exactly happened. Um, I was using this diagram to explain a lot of the steps MSC Nastran takes during the optimization process. I also summarized uh, what was happening at every design cycle here. And we'll be using this summary in this video where we go ahead and view the final output at the very bottom of the F06 file. Uh, before I get started, uh, my name is Christian. I provide more advanced training. I also provide services where I can partner with you on performing an optimize, uh, optimization of your own. If interested, feel free to send me an email at a future date. And I'll leave my email address here. Uh, feel, for, feel free to pause the video and write that down. And now, Let's go ahead and look at the very bottom of our F06 file. There is a summary of the optimization. The first message I want to call out is this message. Run terminated due to hard conversions. As I explained in the last video, this just means that after your optimization where you start at an initial point, if the value for your objective eventually starts to level out or converge, that's what's meant by this hard convergence. And then the rest of the message reads, uh, run terminated due to hard convergence at an optimum. This indicates that it's either found an optimum minimum or an optimum maximum. And then, and states what design cycle it found the optimum. Now here we get a table regarding the design variable history. Let's go ahead and discuss what this actually in means. Here if we look at the first summary or the summary on the left where we went cycle by cycle reviewing what was going on. We also use this diagram to explain. These initial design variables or the initial design variables we started off with. So here, I'll type in here, initial design variables. Then, uh, MSC Nastran began the first design cycle. After the end of the design cycle, it arrived at a improved design where we had new design variables. These new design variables are the values for column one. And then it performed a second design cycle where it started from that a last point. So here you can imagine that if we look at the graph here, the, these were our initial design variables. At the end of the first design cycle, these are our, our new design variables. At the end of the second design cycle, these are our new design variables. So that's basically what these uh, what these columns indicate. These values are the new design variables of the second design cycle, and so on and so on. So here at the end, we have the design variables at the end of design cycle five. Now, something interesting to note our optimization actually went up to design cycle six. And here I'll actually scroll up a little and I'll use that information to explain this table now. Here, for the initial linear static analysis, this was the objective it computed. So if we look again at our summary at the left-hand side, at the beginning of the first design cycle, it performed, performed the first linear static analysis. This value for the objective is the value from the first linear static analysis. This column is, are normalized constraint values. This first normalized constraint value is based on the first linear static analysis. Now, let's go ahead and go on to cycle number one. This value for the objective of the approximate model during the design cycle one, when it was performing the optimization, it produced an approximate model for the improved design. 
this objective value is from the approximate model. And then you see information regarding from the exact analysis for the objective and the constraint. These values here for the objective and the constraint are from the following. After design cycle one, when it started design cycle two, it performed a second linear static analysis. This objective value and this normalized constraint value are from the second linear static analysis. It takes these two values to perform, or rather it doesn't, so I'll ignore what I just said. So it's almost as if these are actually being done in the next design cycle, or rather we're still... Did I mix that up? No, I think we're on track. Yeah, we're on track. So again, th this value here is from the second linear static analysis as well as the second constraint value is from the uh, second linear static analysis. And then here, the value from the approximate model, uh, it goes through design cycle two. It begins the optimization. The approximate model yields a new objective value that would be this 5.33. Then it continues on, and in the next linear static analysis, when it begins design cycle three, this is the objective value from that third linear static analysis, and this is the normalized constraint from that third linear static analysis. And then it continues again to a fourth, a fifth, and a sixth linear static analysis. And here you can see that there is actually an indication here indicating how many uh, linear static analysis were performed. It actually uh, gives you the number of proximal models it constructed. So here, if we look at our summary, we see that there is one approximate model, two, three, four, and then a fifth approximate model. But here, in design cycle six, before it ever has a chance to begin a new optimization and construct a new approximate model, the hard convergence check um, marks this as a good point to end the optimization, so it never gets to create a sixth uh, approximate model. But it does produce a sixth linear static analysis. So that's how you interpret the design variable history table and the summary table for the objective values. Uh, I'll pause here and in the next video we're going to discuss how to view these results in Excel.